All right, why I have the car in this position, I decided to work on these holes here for the side mirror. Uh, so I'm gonna weld these holes up. I'm not gonna use the larger mirrors found on the later cars. And if I use any mirror on the passenger side, I will just drill the holes later. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six holes to weld up. Um, so I'm gonna do that now. This one fits tight enough where it holds itself in place. This really long uh, spoon dolly is working out well because the access here is pretty bad, at least when it's mounted on the car. So I'm able to use the speaker hole and hold this up there and hammer the welds just a little bit. Okay, that's two down and four to go. Okay, she's getting there. Um, I still have these two little holes here. Now these are two, um, those are too small for TIG welding. So I'm gonna zap it like quickly with the MIG welder and uh, kind of quick and dirty here. I'm just gonna kind of fill it as much as I can with the MIG welder. And then I'm gonna go over it with the TIG welder. So it's the MIG TIG uh, combo on this. Okay, I hit this really light with the MIG welder and you kind of see the difference. This is not, um, there's, there's a couple sections that aren't fully penetrated and there's a hole that still exists. I don't know if you can tell in the, in the video here, but there is a hole on this side. So now what I'm gonna do, I might grind this down slightly and then go over it with the TIG welder to melt it all together. All right, here's the, the area that I just ground down and that's the MIG weld. That's the MIG weld there. And it doesn't look too bad. I'm still gonna go over it again with the TIG welder just to make sure that there's no pinholes. Um, if I had a light on the backside, you would be able to see daylight through some of those areas. Um, and in case you're wondering, if you saw in that last segment there, why I use a cutoff wheel to grind down the tops of these welds, it's because, I mean, I like the air tool. Um, I have a lot of control with it um, because it's small and compact, but also just using the edge of the grinding wheel like that puts a lot less heat in the panel than would be the case if I used a like angle grinder where you're using the whole surface. It just creates more friction and friction goes into the heat. So you can actually create distortion just by grinding. By using the cutoff wheel, it's very delicate and only removes the top of the welds. And then I took the big stuff off. I will go back over with a abrasive disc and just go real slow. So the abrasive discs are, are like sandpaper. They don't really create as much heat as like a grinding disc would. So this keeps things, um, tidy and also uh, low distortion. And now it's bye bye mirror holes. While I'm in the mode of uh, filling holes, I saw these here, these are the washer holes, and I, I don't think I'm gonna run the washing system because I don't have the parts, this car's been stripped out, and I just don't think the kind of driving I'm gonna be doing is gonna require these, uh, these washer holes, so they're gone. Here's hole number seven, all welded up. Hole number nine is done. 
feel like I'm golfing. But um, you know, this one I was a little worried about uh, because it's such a flat panel, but I, it was able to keep it distortion distortion free. So this is pretty nice. You can see the original paint there. It's all cracked, but not too thick. So this panel's in good shape. Just need to grind that down. Like I mentioned, I'll hit the high spots with the uh, cutoff wheel, and then I'll just softly grind it so I'm not pushing down and melting the uh, panel even more as I grind it. And uh, next up, I found another couple holes. Um, this is the antenna hole. Um, I'm, I kind of have mixed feelings about that, but I think I'm going to delete it anyways. Um, don't think a hot rod needs a radio anyways. And then this uh, gas tank filler, um, the bucket's been removed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill this too. So here we got another big hole. I'm going to fill that because I'm going to have the filler um, not through the hood, but under the hood. You know, I don't mind um, lifting the hood to put gas in this car. Okay, for this big gas tank filler hole, I have a patch panel that came from the passenger fender. So that passenger fender was wrecked, but I took a piece, I threw, ended up throwing that fender away, but I took a piece right about here out of it. Um, so it's the, uh, it's the right shape and um, it's the right sheet metal thickness. Now this wouldn't be difficult to form out of just regular sheet because it's, it's not a compound curve, it's just a simple um, one dimensional curve. So I could have formed this, you know, almost by hand, but um, because I, I had it and I was throwing it away anyways, I, I cut it out. So next step is to uh, clean up all these edges, make sure there's no undercoating on the inside of this fender and then um, start trimming it and getting it to, to weld in. All right, I was gonna do the welding on this fender in place, but I just realized I can probably do a better job and get the undercoating off the bottom a little easier if I just remove it from the car. So this has been removed before. It's not like it's gonna be difficult to take the fender off. So I'm going to remove a couple bolts and uh, just remove the fender, put it on my bench, and that lets me clean the backside a little bit better. And it also allows me to do some hammer on dolly once I start welding around here. I'm gonna be able to uh, manage the distortion much better when I have better access to each side. So take it off. All right, now I'm able to get some of this old undercoating off and uh, just clean up this area really well before I try to weld it. So I'm glad I took it off. I did that final trim outside so I could really see that, that scribe line um, in the natural daylight. And this is really close to fitting. It looks like it's just a little bit too long. Okay, I got that sucker to go in the hole and the gap is you know, nearly perfect all the way around. Um, it, it looks like the gap's a little bit big there, but it's, um, it, this just needs a little bit of curvature. So I know that it's going to fit. Um, it's sitting itself in place right now. It's holding itself in place. So I'm going to um, take it off one more time, clean off all this blue stuff, and then start tacking it in and getting every edge to mate up uh, perfectly with the fender. All right, as you saw, I struggled a little bit with this corner trying to get this uh, you know, panel flush, but I was able to you know, push it into shape, just had to beat it from the backside a little bit. But I'm pretty happy 
So far it's looking pretty nice. I got it, I got it tacked in place all the way around so it's not gonna go anywhere. And it's nice and flat and all the contours are right. So now it's just a matter of going around and finishing the welding and just keep checking the, the shape so it doesn't get too far um, bent. This is a pretty nice uh, curve here, so it's not, not distorting really quick, but if you, you know, get in a hurry and you just zip through this, then you can really have a, a problem. So I'm going slow. Yes, I'm finally done. I got it all smooth. It's, uh, it's looking really nice and I just need to grind down the welds. But let me show you up close first. Okay, lap around the racetrack. Done. Okay guys, this is um, pretty smooth. There's still a couple um, visible welds and I could spend you know, an infinite amount of time on this, um, you know, grinding, filing, um, hammering to try to get those weld lines out. But in, in all reality, it's just not that important. These are very sound um, welds. This is a pretty professional uh, quality result. You can see the ruler there is sitting you know, pretty flat all the way across. So I'm gonna call this one done and now moving on to the next hole. Right there. All right, guys, this one is gonna be a little tricky. So this one has a, um, an, an outer layer, which is the outer skin, and then there's an inner layer. And I'm not gonna weld the inner layer in right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna weld the outer layer. And I think I wanna put some, some rust proofing down inside this cavity before I seal up the bottom. Um, I don't wanna leave it open because it's gonna trap water. But I do want to um, get something in there. Probably I'll use uh, the 3M cavity wax. I'll blow it out, clean it out, flush it out, and then put some wax down in there. Here's that cavity I was just talking about. There's the double holes, and this is a double layer, um, all the way from here over to this corner, and then it comes all the way down into, into here. Now this side's open, so it does drain. Okay, this first piece, just came out a little too small. I mean, it goes in the hole, but some of those gaps are just a little too big. So, you know, if at first you don't succeed, I mean, I could probably weld that in, but it's better just to make a new one. So what I did is I, is I traced it with a, uh, a Sharpie onto a new piece, and the width of the Sharpie line was just big enough so I can get this piece. And now I just need to cut the sharp corners off and it should go right in. Okay, the second iteration fit much better. It goes right in the hole. I have to use a little tape on this one, otherwise it fell through. Um, now this one I gotta be really careful because I cannot hammer from the backside because it's a cavity on the back. So this is most likely gonna dip down as I weld it, so I'm gonna go really slow. Some people will use uh, silicon bronze in this case um, because it's, it's not a structural piece here. Okay, one thing I can do, because I know this is gonna shrink, is I can pre-stretch it. So I'm using this, um, this awl to just kind of go inside here and I'm just rolling the edge up. This edge is just rolling up. All right. 
right, hole number 10 is now complete. So it came out pretty good, although it, it did sink down. Um, I can show you here with my straight edge. I mean, there, there's a little daylight underneath there, um, but not much. In fact, and part of that's due to the paint, which is not fully stripped, but I did um, use my, uh, my feeler gauge. Um, hard for me to do holding the camera here, but if I slide this underneath here, this is a um, 13 thousandths gauge, so that's about what it is. So it's about a 13 mil area that's sunken in there, and I'm completely comfortable, you know, putting 13 mils of uh, filler over this versus trying to, uh, you know, do a lot more work to get it flatter. This is perfectly good. Um, I, can I can definitely tell you that over here, it's, uh, it's much better. This is pretty much not going to need any filler maybe just a little tiny bit, um, probably five mils. All right, I'm continuing on this uh, filling the hole um, crusade. And now I'm working on these, there's some tiny holes here on the rocker. So that rocker that's on the stock cars has uh, one, two, three, probably four holes, although the front's already been filled. So I am going to do the same thing. I'm going to pre-stretch the hole because this is a blind cavity again. So I'm going to thread in, I, um, I have a, a bolt here where it's a, it's, a, it's a wood screw or sheet metal screw with the washer welded on it so I can pull it with my, with my uh, slide hammer. So I'm just threading this in. Okay, now I ended up going over these guys again with the TIG welder just to make sure that uh, there wasn't any uh, pinholes or areas that I missed. So I was able to control the puddle and make sure it went all the way around the circle. Um, same thing over here and same thing over here. I already ground that one down a little bit. And the one in the, in the front had already been filled when I was replacing or fixing that panel. So that's it um, for that side.